All right. AEW Revolution was to, was last night. Boy, it only it, it did not run uh, uh, five hours. That was that was uh, good. It was like four hours fifty one minutes. So a tight like four fifty one or tight so. a yeah. tight four fifty one. <laughs> uh welcome back kate uh so much i wish there were more aew pay-per-views so we could i could have you on more times i know i know well maybe we'll do like st patrick's day slam or these battle of the belts things or whatever because i love coming on here so (laughs) i really i I wanted to have you on um in late december to have do it like a year in review but and it's like what? you never know with, with the holidays or something like that. But oh well, I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just happy we, we get to talk whenever it is. So. Oh, I know I love it too. It's um, AEW is just so uh, for like a pure pro wrestling fan, such a strong product right now. And before we went on air, we were talking about the fact that like you went to the movie theater and it was like a lot because there was not like a down match on the card, yeah. which is. What I kept saying yesterday was like, it was a five hour pay-per-view and I just don't know what I would have eliminated. Like everything felt like it had a purpose and was important. Going in, it was such a stacked card. I don't know if I've ever seen a more stacked pay-per-view lineup ever. It's amazing. They've done, and I felt like I loved, for me, All Out was like, I think their best pay-per-view. Um but there's a lot of people that liked full gear. And one thing that they're really, really good about, in my opinion, is every match feeling so different that you don't get burned out because you don't have a ton of the same. And they're normally, I felt like this card was not sequenced as well, but oftentimes I find that the sequencing of the cards, they don't put same matches stylistically back to back either. And that that's super helpful to like prevent yourself from getting burned out because a high energy tag match is so different than an MJF match because he's so much more like plotting and a little bit slower and Danielson's so technical. So like there's so many different flavors of pro wrestling that A, you're guaranteed to get something you like and B, like the the diversity in their storytelling is so wide that it doesn't make it, like that felt to be honest to me, like not longer really than an episode of Raw because I felt like it was flying by because it was so, so good, but- then you look up and you're like, oh, yeah, it's midnight. <laughs> right. But yeah, not only are there different types of matches, but every single match had had a reason to have to have the match. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just thrown together at the last minute like certain other companies do. So uh, and um, even the ones that were like a little bit more like I would say like fun leaning like that tornado six we had right before the main event wasn't like the most viscerally told story like there wasn't the most intense story there but like it was so important to have a high energy um like palate cleanser before the main event so even the ones that were like quote unquote throwaways still i felt like were a great matches and b served a purpose in the card overall yeah yeah so let's start with the uh with the buy-in usually usually on like the, the the free time before a pay-per-view some of the matches are okay some of them are won't and this is this is kind of the same thing i mean layla hirsch against chris tatlander uh you're t- sorry my my little monster's going nuts no, they're doing just... work on the apartment next door and he has something to say oh 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 okay <laughs> dogs he want their own the pay-per-view he like really wanted to chime they... in about this buy-in yeah it was so great <laughs> um uh, I, there, there's a theme and and we'll see what happens with this whole ring of honor purchase, but they need something to have extra hours of TV or extra something because there's too many wrestlers on this, on, on this roster that aren't, that are either not being used right or aren't being used at all. And I, I know Chris Stathandler, Statlander has been hurt and you know, she has had title chances, but still, I think they could do more with her. What do you think of what she did with this, this Layla Hirsch, uh, Chris Statley the thing? I thought this was the strongest women's match of the night, kind of like fortunately, unfortunately. The women's division has been, in my opinion, their Achilles heel for the most part. And 
it has grown tremendously, I would say over the past year, but there's still a ways to go. Like you said, I thought as far as the match went, this was so fantastic. Like, I think both Layla and Chris are great. Chris since returning from her major injury, like has been on another level. I think she's been one of the best women in ring wise in the division. Um, she's, she's just been so great. I have only great things to say about her and Layla what a tiny little badass. I want her on team Taz so bad. I think she'd be such a fun fit over there, but you're right. in that my only concern with AEW has been that the roster is getting bloated and you don't want to, you don't want to not sign a guy like Cesaro or Claudio, uh, on, on his indie days, um, or like a Samoa Joe, but like you, you are realistically getting a Where do you put roster. Him? So the ring of honor move to alleviate that and pop that balloon, I think is so great. I'm a huge ring of honor mark. So I was just so excited that the promotion got saved as well. But um, I I just love that the one major concern I had for them, they seem to be alleviating and you're right. Like Chris Statlander to me feels like a top card talent, but like Chris Statlander as your ring of honor champion feels like something that's really cool. I would put Serena Deeb there. Because what she could do for yeah. younger women's talent, I right. think, she was right. so great. And she has history in developmental because she was at NXT as a trainer and with producing matches. So she, to me, she's like that should be a Ring of Honor champion. Um, but you're right in that these women do deserve more recognition, and to and, and the men who are who are just not being featured as much as they should deserve somewhere where they can go and be featured in in regular storylines because the the talent level is not the problem right now. Right. Right. Um, I hope, I know it's probably not going to happen, but I just hope they don't do with ring of honor, what WWE did with ECW. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. I, I, I have a feeling that they would. And I, and I heard what CM Punk said, you know, after the, the, the show, you know, that, that he's so, so happy that it's in good hands. Now I, I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't, you know, mess it up, but I I, think because so many guys came from there, you kind of can't like the generations of talent that in are in AEW now have all had a hand in ring of honor in some way from like Danielson and punk in the really early days to all of the elite coming from ring of honor, um, before they started AEW. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident that they won't, but I understand what you're saying because it is tough because you're like, don't change too much about it, I hope. You know what I mean? Like they were doing a lot of things from a storytelling perspective that were working. Now, if they can get like the production budget behind it and we'll talk about William Regal later, but I can't imagine he's not going to have some role in developing right. because he was at NXT for such a, a long time and such a, a fantastic and well-respected figure there. So Right. Right. Yeah. It'll, it's, it's, it's so cool. I mean, we, we, we thought that ring of honor was dead and now it's, it's been, it has risen. Um, Layla Hirsch for me, they need to do something. I mean, you met, you mentioned she was, you know, you know, mini or whatever, but she's to me, she's a little too small. I need to see more. I need this. I, I mean, do whatever you want with her, but, but you need to convince me that, that she is actually a badass. I can see that. I think, despite her size um well one she's tremendously strong i i strong i'd seen her on the indies um in intergender matches and she was suplexing people that she had no business to be oh, suplexing wow. um and she works small she's smart for a smaller talent she targets areas like she she doesn't try to outwork her size which is something i appreciate i think you're gonna see that inner badass flourish the more that you see her on screen we're going to get her in Thunder Rosa next week. That's someone a little closer to her own size. Not She's very tiny, so not totally her own size, but a little bit closer than Stat. But this was a little bit more David and Goliathy. But smaller people, like look at Danielson, you know what I mean? He, he can make you believe that he's going to beat some giant meaty man. So right. <laughs> she'll, she'll right. I think, get there. She'll, I think, get there. She's a, a hell of a talent. Okay, you bring that up, so I'll bring it up now. I don't know. I'm going to just title this, Is This Inappropriate? Um, <laughs> Chris Statlander is kind of kind of big for a woman. 
And um, I'm thinking of Jamie Hayter too, is, is someone that's like a big muscular woman. Yeah. Now, there's that phrase, two big meaty men slapping meat. Are we allowed to say two big meaty women slapping meat? Or, is that- are they, or thick ladies? I'll take that. She is, uh, they are, they are built like, like in a, in a good way, athletically, like brick houses, I think. Um, and it's for me, a refreshing thing to see on television, because I think you get a lot of kind of more skinny women right. and you get a lot of the, like, holy cow, she's such a powerhouse or like such a force. And so like, like overwhelmingly bigger than the rest of the division. So I think somewhere like that's just someone athletically built, like Jamie Hayter, that just looks like they can come and kick your ass is like a right. really nice representation to have on right. screen. So yeah, give, give me that collision. I'll take it. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, next was Hook against QT Marshall. And we knew what this was going to be. This is just, you know, Hook, Hook kicks someone's butt. Uh, that was one of the, co- was that in 2021 when he, when he debuted? You were there. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I got my, uh, I went to five shows in the area in a very short amount of time. But <laughs> yeah, I think that was, was on the tail end of 2021. That was in Long insane. Island. Yeah. But that was one of the coolest <laughs> moments of 2021. Hook just, you know, we didn't know what to expect. He looked like a 12 year old no. little boy in a hoodie. And then, and then he wrestles and he's built like crazy. And he's just putting on these moves that are amazing. Uh, yeah. I, Let's just let. Uh, hey, I'm I'm perfectly okay. Trot him out every every week or two and just have him kick someone's butt. You know, I don't I don't I don't care. Let him let him do his thing. God, he like he was a really really fun surprise when we were at that show. We were like, wouldn't it be hilarious if Hook was like amazing? And then he was. Like, remember, it was a meme. It was a joke. Like, ho ho ho, Cook's gonna kick everybody's butt. Ho ho ho, and then he did. And then it's like, holy shit, he really can though. Yeah. Um, before that, he was like walking around in a hoodie eating chips. Right. And then he comes out, and what amazed me because you can teach someone to do moves, right? How smooth he is in the ring, and his presence are like absurd for someone who is as as young in this business as he is but i guess growing up seeing it watching it being connected right. to it really really helped right. but um yeah this match is ex- like you you called it like this is exactly what we thought it was going to be there was no way qt marshall was going to win here i think his first rivalry is going to be against starks for that ftw belt and i think uh his dad is going to have a very real proud moment i, th- I think in that feud that was the other cool thing about his debut. You know, he was like, un- like unleashed to the world, but you know, Taz was on commentary. So he's like, just such a, such a proud Papa. And, and he should be, it was so cool. Yeah. And you can like hear the sincerity too. It's, it's really nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there was house of black versus Penta Puck and Eric Redbeard. Holy cow. I, I could I could watch this is fight forever. I could have watched this yeah. forever. My goodness. I, to me, this was, this was just so good. Uh, um, who's the, uh, who's the, who's the big guy? I'm, 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 lo- I'm, I'm yeah, forgetting. Brody King. On Brody House King. Yeah. Dark. yeah. This was to me a little bit of a coming out party for people who didn't know what he could do, but he was a ring of honor standout for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. This was just fun. It was, it was fun. Um, and, and, and it was also Buddy Matthews' debut, which which is really cool and just oh, he's what... so good, man. He's so he's skilled at a lot of things, but bumping is one of them. So some of the spots he took with Redbeard on the other side were so good. I thought Penta was excellent in this. I loved that the first thing he did was to go for Buddy Matthews' eye because Malachi Black has had. This, this gap right, show I that you right. received from Buddy Matthews in WWE. And then I guess he says that as he gets stronger, the more of his face turns black, which is just like the coolest, <sighs> most badass thing I've ever heard. But sometimes six man matches can get like a little bit clumsy or hectic. This one, I thought the storytelling was really smooth. The end ring action was great. It, it was perfect to put on right before the pay-per-view started because it was a pay-per-view caliber match that was high energy and got you excited going into it i it, i thought this match was absolutely gangbusters it did what it was supposed to do it's like hey this is the kind of stuff you're going to see on this pay-per-view so you should buy this pay-per-view come on uh 
Puck is another one in the category of deserves better. He's so good. He's in, in a company full of really good wrestlers. He stands out. They need to do more with him. Come on, do something. I agree. He and Andrade, I feel like, are two people that have gotten lost in the shuffle that need to very quickly get unstuck. He also and had... And, well, Miro's going to come back in a really big way, I think. He's been injured, and Hopefully. I think they're going to pick a, a hell of a storyline for him to come into. But... um pack is he he was legitimately injured and he had a lot of visa issues yeah. so or i don't even think visa issues i think travel because of covid issues which really made like a start and stopped his reign and plus the death triangle we've seen like pack was injured phoenix is injured now and at one point penta was injured so even as far as the stable like there's just been some things that have gotten stuck in the mud with him but his striking ability in the ring is so good he does everything really really well um his ability to do top move ropes, but his ground game being so strong makes him such an incredibly unique wrestler. I do hope they find their footing with them soon. I think ROH is going to help, and I really, really hope that we get trios titles because there's so many stables. The tag team division is like oversacked. The fact that I don't see Bear Country on my TV regularly is like kind of shocking because the fact that they're like the 10th best tag team in a company is insane because they're probably a top 20 tag team in the world but all of the best tag teams yeah <laughs> with exception of a few and at, at other places happen to just be in AEW because their division is so strong and they care about it so much so I think trios titles would be something that's really helpful I think trios titles would be beneficial for both house of black and for and for death triangle but this match was Oh, I can't say enough about it. So a much trios fun. tournament would be so much fun. Agree so with, with what so they have fun. there. Like, gosh, between LAX, between the situation with the elite and the undisputed era red dragon faction, yeah. like that's, that's going to become trios soon. House of black LAX. Like there's so many possibilities there. Uh, jungle boy and christian and luchasaurus could be in it. like yeah there's so many possibilities and because they've earned my trust with storytelling it's something i really want to see there's a lot of places that i don't think would do six man titles or trios titles as well because it i think it requires an incredible amount of care when you're dealing with like six competitors and divisions you have a division of stables then and you're yeah. going to have people in individual feuds at the same time it becomes complicated so take your time do it right but i feel like that would also in addition to the roh acquisition help alleviate some of these guys that aren't getting on tv enough yeah yeah then we start the pay-per-view and <laughs> smart opener chris jericho and eddie kingston eddie kingston to me kind of reminds me of mick foley like this every man underdog that everyone loves. And I mean, I, I, I guess there was some doubt that, that you know, if, if Jericho was going to, uh, you know, win this or not. And uh, just great. It was just, it was just, it was just a solid opener, a solid brawl. Loved it. These guys beat the hell out of each other. Yeah. I did not think this was going to open the card. This was one of the things that I would, if, there's like two matches I didn't think would open it. And this was one of them. Um, but when it did, I was like, Eddie's going over because there's no way they're going to start on Eddie Kingston, who has become so beloved losing like his pop is as big as anybody's um, mm -hmm. except maybe Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole gets bigger pops than punk at this point, that music hits and it's insane live. Um, but he is, he is beloved. It's so funny to think that he wasn't, someone that was originally signed with the company because and that like he can't when he and punk were feuding like there were mixed reactions which is a very big deal because punk was still kind of on the wave of this of this baby face return the, the honeymoon yeah yeah big time so when he got mixed reactions i love to see it because they're they're my two favorite promos in wrestling mjf hangs right there so this punk run for me has been incredible because he's doing all my dream matches right up front. But um, like he is, he is just so cherished by this AEW fan base. And I, I absolutely love it. So I was like, there's no way he's not going over. Um, I did not think Jericho was going to tap out to him. I think that's a very 
um, ego aside moment for Jericho. Like, I think that's so selfless of him to do because he didn't have to. Like, he's he's so good at putting over people. Like, he did it with Orange Cassidy. Um, Scorpio Sky was the first victory that, uh, or the first, excuse me, the first loss that Jericho had. Like, he really, really, it, it means a lot to him to be able to put other people over, I think. And to, to tap to Eddie Kingston here, I think was so interesting. And uh, Eddie Kingston's reaction after of like being in disbelief that he actually- <laughs> You mean won I won? Was so, he was utterly stunned. And the whole story to this point has been Kingston can't win on the big stage. Like it, it it's was like, the perfect round out to the story of like, he can't believe he won because he never gets to win the big match. What is this winning? Like, what is, what, what do you mean I won? You, what, why are you oh raising my, my hand? What you... Eddie Kingston's all of us with life, man. He's just like, can't believe when he actually gets a, a W there. But great, great match, a fun opener. The, the right length of time. I think this is the best Jericho's looked in a while. He's in much better physical shape than he was a couple months ago. Yeah. And yeah. uh, he needed to be because there were some neck and head bumps in this that were rough. Those suplexes were brutal. Um, they beat the hell out of each other. And I know Eddie Kingston's in ring style isn't for everyone, um, but I like it because it always looks like he's trying to win a match and he always looks like he's trying to kick your ass. Like that, right. I like that in wrestling instead of, and I don't, I don't hate flippy do bullshit like some people, but like I, that's my preferred thing is when it looks like you're trying to win the match at all times. <laughs> Eddie Kingston being surprised that he won is going to be Steeler fans next year. Like, what we won a game? What? What, what is this winning? I won a game? Yeah, that's sad. That's where we're <laughs> at right now. <laughs> uh, then there was the for the AEW Tag Team Championship, Jurassic Express versus Red Dragon versus Young Bucks. I mean, you knew it was going to be good. You knew they were going to do good stuff. Um, and I, I thought the story was going to be more that, you know, Red Dragon and Young Bucks hated each other and they were going to, you know, cost each other something. So it's like, okay. I mean, it's, it was good stuff. I really liked this. I thought the, this one, two punch opening the pay-per-view, I thought was great. The Bucks were on like, they're always great, but they were on a different level yesterday. All three teams work such different styles that I think it was very, very fun. Um, because they're all good at those styles. So it, that always makes her a fun mashup. I agree with you that I thought it was going to be Red Dragon and the Bucks, like more that they were going to cost each other the title. Um, but I did like that Jurassic Express won and that they won clean because I think despite them being champions, they still have like this underdog nature to them. So I felt like this really cemented that like, no, they can hang with the, two of the best tag teams in the world. Like I think the Bucks at FTR are the two best doing it right now. Um, this to me was more about them proving that they're on the same playing field, which I think was a nice like sub story to have come out of this. Well, yeah. I mean, you mentioned that the tag team division is so strong and I, I don't care how many times they wrestle. It still feels like a couple, couple singles guys that were thrown together. And I, I think Luchasaurus deserves a singles push. I mean, he, every time he, he he's a big guy that, that does amazing moves. I'm wondering I, if um if when Christian turns heel, it might be the end of Jurassic Express because I think, I mean, nobody screams like TNT title level star like Jungle Boy and yeah. Luchasaurus you're right. Like the fact that he can do a moonsault at his size and he's doing all these insane things. He like Luchasaurus is a great name for him. Like he can do some incredibly acrobatic things as such a big guy. Like he could be such a serviceable hand in, in other ways. I think you're, you're right about that. Um, but this, this, I thought was a, a really fun match. I, I loved some of the stuff that the Jacksons were doing in this. Like I, the, the, strengths and weaknesses of each of them are completely balanced out by each other like I think Nick Jackson is so great in the ring and Matt Jackson has like a little bit stronger of a personality and is an incredible at selling so it's just like a really fun offset of each other it's like they're brothers or something <laughs> <laughs> well one of the best things was uh when they turned heel not that they were not that they weren't bad 
uh, you know, when, when AEW first started and they were, and they were phases and stuff like not that it was bad, but it's like that, that really gave them a direction and they, that, that, that slimy heel kind of thing. Okay. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> we just mentioned that the roster is so bloated, but I really want the Briscoes to come in. Oh, oh my God. Um, I was watching ring of honor a few years ago, um, uh, and, and the, like a, a big feud was uh, the Young Bucks versus the Briscoes. And they they just tore it down every single time they fought. It was so much fun. Oh, They're that would be so much so, fun. So um, synonymous with Ring of Honor. They got offers from, from WWE and turned them down to stay oh, in I'm Ring sure. of Honor. I'm like, sure. I think you can't not bring them in, especially like they've, they've been kind of feuding, but not in the ring with FTR so much that I, I think it's inevitable that they will come in as a part of, of the ring of honor adoption process a little bit. We just had a, a pay-per-view without FTR and FTR, you could argue is the, is the best tag team in the world. But like that, that's just, for me, but, they are. Yeah. Like yeah. They, so that, that, that's, that's are. what this roster is. And I think I, I, like I saw some of their tweets is like, Hey, why are we at home? Like, why, why are we <laughs> uh, They're such yeah. a blast. Huh? Yeah. Um, then the ladder match, Keith Lee, Orange Cassidy, Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, Wardlow, Christian Cage. I, I, I didn't have a lot of expectations because, okay, ladder match with six people. What are we going to do? And then the people involved, some of them are big, but I don't care. I need more Keith Lee in my life. <laughs> I'm so happy he's he's an AEW. You can <laughs> You would have to be a moron to mess up that guy, which is exactly what happened in WWE. But still, you just look at the guy. Just, just, just look at him. Just look at anything he does. It's amazing. You just, just he's plug and play. Just let him go. The athleticism and his size are like impossible for me to wrap my brain around the fact that those can be married. And what I love with him is when there's a guy his size that can do what he can do as far as like, I can chain wrestle, but also throw people into like the eighth row. Um, there's always this temptation that they're a monster and that there's this huge guy. So they have to be a heel and they have to be intimidating. He is one of the most naturally likable people in all of wrestling. It is impossible to not want to root for that guy. Like in, in my opinion, like I just, he seems like somebody you just you got to get behind and i love that he got the reception that he did that he is going to be pushed as a face here like i i was so excited to see him on my screen this was a fun ladder match um i my favorite spots in it i did not think we're going to be orange cassidy spots but here we are <laughs> him skinning the cat onto a ladder to try and grab the brass ring was absolutely insane him doing the, his vicious striking, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with the three houses in the ring was such a fun spot there. I only had two complaints in this, which were at one point, the, the ring was clear and Wardlow just could have climbed the ladder and won. Right. I, right. I, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like commentary tried to sell it on like, no, he wants to make sure the big dudes are like put away, put away. And we got a really fun spot of, um, who was it? it was Keith Lee and I think Hobbs going through the stage which was a fantastic spot to watch um but like logically I was like dude turn around and climb the ladder like that's yeah. stupid yeah. and then you know Ricky Starks took a very scary bump on a surgically repaired neck um which it, it looks like he's okay thank goodness but that was just that was a really really rough spot he also had a spear through the ladder in this match like I'm the biggest Ricky Starks mark in the world um really really creative offense with that guy but uh, overall, I thought it was pretty good, especially considering like who was in there. You're right. And that it was going to make for an interesting dynamic because it was like, can half these guys climb a ladder without breaking it? Like, my God, them wishboning the ladder was hilarious. Too. Yes, that was that funny. Was really, really fun. <laughs> Orange Cassidy. It's amazing. You would think that's a one trick pony or it's like, OK, we get the joke. He's so much more than that. And he still does it, but he does so many more other things and it just works. Just, just that's a real credit to him. Well, it helps that he, because he's very good in the ring, he's always in control of the joke. 
like he can turn on the gas at any moment because he's yeah. a very, very good in ring wrestler. And the other part of it is there's always the justification that he's trying to do it to get under people's skin. So I think that keeps it from being one note because it's, it's also a mind game. It's not like he's just being apathetic for the sake of being apathetic. He's trying to drive his opponent's bad shit. And I think that really, really helps because it, it just adds a layer there that I think otherwise would feel very, very one note, but him being great in the ring and, and him playing mind games. I really want him to turn heel. I think an apathetic dick would be such a fun move. Oh my goodness. That would be interesting. They did that... with Bailey, right? Like she was a hugger and the there was yeah. this heel side of her that we were waiting for this whole time. Like I think somebody being apathetic and suddenly not caring about their best friends and like that guy, it's easy to hate the apathetic right. guy. Right. At, at, when everyone has all of their self-worth wrapped up in these titles, the guy that doesn't give a shit, like, man, that could get really fun, in my opinion. I I think there was some interview last week. Where he's like, you want me to climb a ladder? I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> he's so great. Half the time, he doesn't know what the stipulations are or why he's there. Yeah. He's like, what, what is this? Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> um, and then Wardlow, hey. It is hard to create stars and, and build them and, and build them up. They have built up Wardlow perfectly. Boy, they get people behind him. It's just it's just perfect storytelling, perfect booking, the way they, they're handling Wardrow, Wardlow. It's true. Him and Hook, I feel like I've seen grow up right in front of our eyes on different timelines. I think having Wardlow with MJF is, is just so smart because MJF is already so outstanding at what he does as far as storytelling. I think you've seen Wardlow grow tremendously in his time in the pinnacle. And I've had kind of like mixed thoughts on the pinnacle because it just seems like, are you a thing or aren't you sometimes? Yeah. But like uh, everyone in it, I love. And I think, I mean, Wardlow was just this like enormous presence that stood there. And now his facial expressions do so much storytelling. It's so much fun. He was absolutely the right choice because I think him, we'll see it, it later, him turning on MJF is going to just be expedited by this potential title shot, which I think is is such a great story and so much fun. And they really, really have done a great job of, um, you know, they're, they're good at turning on the gas with people when they need to. And they're good at letting guys who are a little bit greener or newer um, mature at the rate that they need to mature to to get fans behind them or against them and at an appropriate pace. So I'm a hundred percent with you. The reaction that he got later in the night, we are ready to see Wardlow kick the shit out of MJF. And that is going to be really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the TBS championship, Jade Cargill versus uh, Ty Conti. We knew Jade was going to win. This was still okay. You know, now, now it, it was funny when they faced off last week and jade kissed her on the forehead because nothing says disrespect like like the only other thing you could do with a shorter person is like pat him on the head or something like that yeah, I mean, it was very yeah. disrespectful but i don't know what kissing on the lips <laughs> my goodness be, 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 besides drive every guy crazy i was gonna say they should have put that on the buy in the pay-per-view <laughs> yeah. through the roof my friend um this match was only okay for me i felt like it only had about eight minutes or so on a very, very loaded card. Um, you know, coming off of a high energy matter ladder match like that is also tough. Jade looks like a star. Her charisma is incredible. There's nobody in the world that looks like her. She's great with that. I'm an in-ring dork and she isn't there yet on the in-ring stuff. She shouldn't be. She's had 30 matches doing this. Not everyone's going to be hooked. It's good. Like that's an insane anomaly. Um, but even style-wise, compatibly, it just seemed like they were just a step off this whole time. Loved um, Tay using the pile driver and the frog splash in this, so that was really, really cool. I felt like toward the end was when they started to click, unfortunately. Um, but her next win is going to be 30, and I think you're going to see her say, I went through this entire roster, nobody can touch me, and we're going to get a debut of either like a Tony Storm or an Ember Moon slash Athena, somebody from the outside world Please, that comes yes, and, and yes. hands her her first loss and grabs that title. She's she's girl Gold, Goldberg, and I'm okay with that. That's Yeah, if that's your thing, like they've, they're doing a great job at making her seem like a star. I'm just like, 
I'm I'm a mark. I'm a dork. I like <laughs> like I I love in and ring stuff, but that doesn't mean I can't like completely see her value as far as what she offers to this company. And I think she has a very very bright future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're, we're watching her progress. We're watching. It's like in ring training. In ring, like we're just just watching her get she's better. Right, really Danielson. Cool. She's not. There's no way that she's not going to be fantastic by the end. Right. Of like she's right. training with one of the best, if not the best, to ever do it. So yeah. <laughs> um, then we have CM Punk, MJF, and dog collar match. My goodness, the build up to this. I mean, basically everything that these two have done has been amazing. But that MJF promo where he basically qu- made us question everything that we thought about everything. <laughs> it's like, like what, what, even even CM Punk is like, am I the bad guy here? What's going I loved on? That. I loved it so I, much. Psychological warfare. And then CM Punk coming out to his Ring of Honor music, which, you know, I didn't know at the time, but, but you know, you, you, you find out real quick. It's like, wow. Um, oh, and that, that promo punk did right before like like after he got bloodied up and it, it, it showed up on um on rampage oh so good so great so good uh you knew this was gonna be great and then you know the, the wardlow thing at the end was was perfect like, oh i don't know where it is I, oh I, I guess i lost it <laughs> and then he gives it to punk that was that was, just, was perfect such a fantastic story um i Love MJF. I, I've loved him before this feud, but this feud brought out something in him that we haven't gotten to see yet. And I don't think it's because he didn't have it in him. I think he proved that if he wanted to be a baby face tomorrow, you could do that with him. A lot of that story was very real. He's talked about it um, before about getting quarters thrown at him as a Jewish stereotype, like by um, people on his football team when he was growing up. A lot of that story was very real. So, um, that's probably why it felt very real and to basically give him an origin story like he's a super villain that explains his actions but doesn't excuse them it was it was really for me this felt so much more vicious because uh he had elicited some sympathy which is normally he's just chicken shit right right so um him eliciting sympathy before this made this so much more personal so much more vicious if you're a dwarf like me and you watched Sam Punk's Raven and him dog collar match, you knew that a lot of the things MJF were saying were callbacks to Punk's promos in that match um, about being a snake and the devil um, hiding in plain sight. Like things, things like that were direct callbacks to that match. Um, MJF playing Punk's music and Punk having that scouted, I thought was one of the most creative things I've seen in wrestling. Uh, the amount of storytelling that happened before they set foot in the ring is just insane. Punk came out in his ring of honor gym shorts. Like they looked exactly the same as his ring of honor gym shorts. Punk's turn and heel, I think against Adam page. I think that's where we're going next. Um, But this has been like, I, for me, punk was my favorite guy since I started watching in real time. So him coming back was so incredible for me and emotional for me as a fan and then the kingston feud brought out something different and now this mjf feud is bringing out something different like that kingston feud was they were just beating the hell out of each other for 10 minutes like that was nuts and then this one was a little bit more traditional of a wrestling match but it was a freaking dog collar match and it was bloody like his his feuds have now marked something completely different on the card than anything else that's on the card and i just think that's so special and it's it's a sign that he is really one of the best to do it because like it just there's nothing on the card that felt like this and in either situation and i think that's so unique and i think seeing mjf grow through this feud was was so awesome the world low spot that you mentioned um for Wardlow to come down with his ring not be able to find it and then to just place it on the ring apron didn't hand it directly to punk like it was so and there was also not a moment where mjf and punk were like fighting for it which i think was good too because there's less excuses that way like more the wanted punk to have it but he didn't hand it directly to him i thought was so so good and um 
And then Punk making sure that MJF knew he had the ring was like such a great set of a bitch move. I, I This was bloody. It was uncomfortable as a Doc Holler match is supposed to be. Um, they need to be careful about their blading. I thought Punk was going to pass out halfway through this. It was nice. yeah. So it was like at some point that's row. gonna happen you you can bleed too much you can you can you lose sure too much blood can. you sure can and he bladed heavily the past two weeks but um what a match what a story you know what a, what a great story that we got to see out of them and um i feel like in both situations the right guy won like mjf going over in chicago is a huge deal and i think yeah. here you know were though being used to expedite everything so gently and so cleanly it wasn't like a ton of interference it was just a gesture um that's gonna send mjf spiraling in an entirely different way and i think we're gonna see punk start to turn heel which is my favorite thing heel punk is my favorite thing in the world (laughs) it's just fun to see punk have fun it's nuts Uh, um, it's so fun (laughs) I, i i guess there was um when like after uh dynamite when he's being carried to the back apparently you know the fans are saying like like he had the biggest grin on his face and he's covered in blood he just got destroyed he had so he's just so happy there was a picture going around and he's just grinning like an idiot and not like a maniacal (laughs) heel idiot like i'm so happy that we delivered the story and i'm covered in blood right now grin on his face like so much fun and um he got really really emotional in the in the scrum afterwards too if you're a a fan which i'm assuming you are if you're listening to this i would encourage you to go back and watch his media scrum because he was very very emotional in it and it was really compelling stuff the line about i'm i'm glad i'm glad uh that that tony got the uh the the tape library and it's not uh it's not some some uh, tab on some shitty app or something like that what a great shitty app that doesn't work he's like crying like because he's so emotional about ring of honor because in in some ways in some ways it's the house that punk built in some ways it's the house that everybody there built um but he's like crying because he knows that footage of him is going to be in good hands and he just takes a swipe at wwe saying it's not going to be on like some shitty app that doesn't work (laughs) um is hilarious to me and then later he had made some other comment i forget what it was but he took another swipe at wwe like kind of gently like very very funny stuff i was like oh if bret hart is constantly taking hits at hogan punk will be like wwe is punk's hogan for the rest of his life in this really really fun way (laughs) Um, i i have i have friends that you know aren't, aren't wrestling fans or whatever and they say like what's this aew thing and and like one of them said you mean that thing? Isn't CM Punk there? I mean, for having CM Punk is is huge for AEW. And he's not, it's nice that he's not just resting on his laurels and resting on the past. Like he's just creating new legacies and, and new things. And it's just, it's just beautiful. It's, it's beautiful to see. That was the big thing was, can he do it without having a chip on his shoulder? And yeah, yeah, yeah he can. I think people forget like, I loved best of the world punk because it was the most cathartic thing to happen as a wrestling fan since I had started watching from that point on. But my favorite version of punk was straight edge society punk. Like he's a master storyteller. He doesn't need to be railing against the machine. And I think we're getting to, to see that now and getting to see him, like you said, genuinely happy is, is so much fun. So much fun, but not for long. You're going to see a heel punk soon. I think. <laughs> oh, oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be gimme. fun. <laughs> um, and then for the AEW Women's Championship, Dr. Brick Babe, Baker, DMD versus Thunder Rosa. Okay, they just they just botched this. They everything yeah. everything about this was a mess. You had such a gold mine because of what happened a year ago. And I actually thought that their match a year ago, uh, it was almost exactly a year ago, was maybe the match of the year. And they kept, it was just on the back burner. It's like, okay, you know, you could always come back to it. But then the buildup wasn't good. The match wasn't good. The psychology wasn't that good. Just, there's just a lot of problems with this. I think it's going to get fixed in a week or two, but still yeah. this, this did not go great. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it just, it, it could have been a lot better. 
Yeah, and it's not on the fault of the wrestlers. There was actually some really good chain wrestling in this. Yeah. Um, and Rosa slapped the shit out of her at one point. Um, but the outside interference stuff with Britt is so played out. What you were alluding to sounds like um, what I think is going to happen, which is in, in San Antonio, Texas, Thunder Rosa's like home, this side of the country. Uh, it, AEW will be one day removed from the one year anniversary of their uh, lights out match. And I think you're going to probably get a stipulation match. I would love for it to be a Texas death match because they're going to be in Texas. A steel cage match to keep all the interference away yeah. could be a great blow off. And, and I think it'll be Rose's time with the title. So I think I'll, I'll appreciate this more, but I'm, I'm just so done with the, like Thunder Rosa has backup now and is smart enough to know that Brit is exactly. Do Why this. didn't you bring her? Yeah. Why didn't you it, bring your friend? Or, you knew there was going to be interference. Justify why she didn't show up, right? Like we talked about that a little bit last night. Of, um, you know, have Jamie Hader take out Mercedes Martinez with a pipe, or whatever. Yeah. You know, like have yeah. have some just some piece of storytelling. I'm of the belief that maybe the ending of this match got switched. Um there i think it's very possible that they changed the booking because they realized that san antonio and the the lights out match like maybe they were gonna do a blow off with thunder rosa as already champion or something but like some of this felt thrown together like the fact that she's randomly like if you lose normally in AEW, you go to the bottom of the rankings you have to work your way back up she's just facing layla hirsch for a number one contenders match and then going to you know get back in the title picture just like just by happenstance um what and they didn't even need to do that they could have just said brit's a cheater i want a rematch and there you go so <laughs> this was a mess for me i don't think it's the fault of the performers that this was a mess i think you saw some good chain wrestling in there for sure um but uh but yeah the the storytelling here was not great the payoff in two weeks from now, I think is going to be an incredibly special moment if it goes the direction that we're thinking. Wins and losses matter, except when they don't. Except when they don't. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of the standings. I wish they would just call it a heat chart or something instead. Yeah. Um, just, just just do rankings or something like that. Don't, don't forget about the standing stuff. But Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it, it, you can't be half in that world. You either got to abide by it. That was something Ring of Honor was great at was divisions and records determined like everything that happened there it was so great um you can't just pick and choose when that's the case though <laughs> so 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 I, I i saw it in the theater and it was about a half hour drive home and i was i i had you and alex oh thank uh, you to, to accompany me to uh the uh, uh on my drive home and it's like okay cool and then it's like okay I, I know they go a little long or whatever and then but then eventually i i fell asleep like a normal human being and then we i i, I human beings so. <laughs> thank you alex and, then, and i are not normal human beings that is a, a science you went fact. three hours three <laughs> hours in our defense, it was a five-hour show, and we do two hours for a two-hour show. So this was way ahead of the curve for us. And if William Regal is going to show up, like that's going to be like an hour of the show. Alex does the best William Regal impression I've ever heard. Um, but yeah, it was it was a long night last night. But part of it was um, the fact that Alex and I never showed up. Part of it was. Um, the fact it was a five hour show and part of it was people were just so damn excited to talk about this man like we got so so many chats that rolled in from people who just were so hyped about what aw presented so um yeah, yeah three hours is a very long time but sadly is like ahead of the curve for alex and i <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, 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 I commented. It's like, what I, whatever I saw Regal, the first thing I saw, was like, Oh, Alex is going to have fun with this. That was one of the first thoughts in my mind too. The second thought was ring of honor is going to give us old NXT. Yeah. And, um, yeah. with Regal at the helm, like basically NXT was ROH with the budget and William Regal. And now we're going to have that in AEW. And I was like, well, it's very funny to me that AEW is going to both give us their product and what was their biggest competitor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Moxley versus Danielson. We knew it was going to be good. It was good. 
Alex, I, Alex was probably said, this was a dog collar match without the dog collar. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you knew they were going to beat the hell out of each other. You knew they were going to bleed. You knew they weren't really going to get further than five feet apart from each other. Um, I was of the belief that this and the dog collar match needed to be at opposite ends of the card. I think this suffered from, from like a, an emotional investment in the pay-per-view and crowd reaction standpoint. This suffered from card placement in a really big way. Um, but what we got at the end of it, who gives a shit? Like, I'm going to go back and rewatch this match probably because I felt like I was like, I, I was exhaling and not as like fully locked in as I should have been. Cause what I saw was great. And the storytelling was great. The, the blows that they were taking and the one upsmanship. Um, but the, the biggest thing in this, in this story is now that we got William Regal yeah. showing up, not just showing up, slapping the shit out of these young men and telling them to get along. It was so cute. It was so much like, like Dad, daddy yeah. coming in, dad coming in, like two brothers fighting. And then and, and, and he smacks Moxley and, and uh, Daniel says like, ha ha, daddy likes me better. Ha ha, you're in trouble. And he smacks Danielson. And Regal just walking in there like he'd been in AEW for the past 15 years. Like he's right. his career there. <laughs> Not like an ounce of uncertainty with what he was there to do, the story that he was in, the story that he was telling, the magnitude of the event. Like he walked in there and felt like he should be there immediately. And it's because it was not in any way for him about him. He was there to get his sons back into shape and to get them getting along. I just, the, the magnitude of what that move means for us as fans is like, I think so great. I'm so happy he gets to work at the second biggest wrestling promotion in the world because he, um, when he was released by WWE, the, the outpouring of love of there would be no Becky Lynch without me. There'd be no FTR with, or without Regal, there'd be no like the amount of people that were just like, he's responsible for making my career. Um, yeah. My career was, was such an, uh, a tribute to the legacy that he had there. What a fun, I thought he would come in. What a fun way for him to come in, man. Like what, what a fun Perfect. entrance into AEW. And, and he is such a great on-screen personality too, oh. that just like nothing says like, authority figure like like a dude in a british accent <laughs> oh dark. my god if you asked if alex he's the only good one there ever was and i <laughs> uh i have ones that i liked but william regal to me has by far been the best because i said this last night too um he's the only one that i feel like acknowledged that this is still a workplace like that the ring is where the combat happens, but there are rules that are meant to be followed and you don't get to act like an idiot. Like he was really, really, and if you do, there's consequences for your actions. Like he was so good with that. Um, I'm, I'm just so thrilled and I can't imagine, I know Tony Khan said in the scrum yesterday that he's booking ROH, but I can't imagine William Regal is not going to have a tremendous influence on what happens there. It just, it makes too much sense if ROH is going to essentially be your developmental program. Um, but I just, what I thought he was, he was going to end up in AEW. I thought maybe he'd bring Joe. I had no, no thoughts of him entering this storyline and what a perfect way to do it. Cause he really did, you know, mentor Danielson and Mox both. Like this was so much fun, so much fun. And shout out to Danielson for dropping his name two weeks ago like Danielson has been leaving these little hints that you don't realize are there at the time and then something happens and you're like oh that son of a bitch told us exactly what was gonna happen it turns out like so so fun so fun <laughs> I hope Tony Khan I don't know get some sleep it's like okay you're yeah. gonna you're gonna book AEW and now you're gonna book Ring of Honor what dude look out you you Take and a he's, walk. He's like doing the darks too. I think dark is going to have to get consolidated in, in, into one program. Um, but he like produces that now too, since uh, Max Caster got himself in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm wondering if producing just means you're running all this shit by me now. 
Um, right, right. But yeah, I mean, he <laughs> he says he has the book. I'm wondering a how long that will last. B. I don't. That seems like a really good place for Cody to re-enter wrestling. To be honest, um, I think that could be if WWE is jerking him around, or he did, decided not to sign there for his own accord. If he if he wanted to, Cody back in ROH in in some way could be really fun. I think to start it for cohesiveness of the product, it, it definitely makes sense to have Tony Khan do that. I just wonder how long, realistically, sustainably, that that can last. We could spend another hour talking about the whole Cody Rhodes thing. I think it's absolutely fascinating. Like, you know, it, it, how do you, you, he created, he helped create this whole thing and then it kind of outgrew him and, and or pushed him out or, or whatever. It's just an amazing situation. But if he were to come back either as a heel going against Tony, because we could use like, you know, real life stuff or as like you said, like, like basically running ring of honor, like, like, and, and just, you know, development or stuff. So many things you could do there. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It's uh, it's why I like wrestling. It's a, it's the first like major real life implication things outside of the punk return, which was like all feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's very very interesting and the fact that he hasn't shown up in wwe makes that very interesting very yeah. interesting so we'll see it's a very fun time to be a wrestling fan if you don't work yourself into a shoot here <laughs> <laughs> um, then we had ahfo versus darby allen sammy guevara and sting you knew you knew darby and and sammy together you know that they're going to do good stuff andrade's you know doing Incredible. doing great stuff and it's like and you know sting was gonna do something it's like okay you know sting okay whatever he goes through three tables my god from a balcony he's 62 <laughs> he's a 62 year old man alex kept losing it he was like the eisenhower administration is when this man was born this man was born during the Eisenhower administration and he's diving through three tables. I'll say this, this match was meant to be fun, high energy chaos before the main event. Perfect palate cleanser, perfect palate cleanser. The Spanish fly off of uh, like crashing into the tables into the stage was one of the scariest, most insane, incredible things I've ever seen um, and Sting these are these are the two spots that everyone is going to remember from this thing diving through three tables onto andrade i felt like that spot if you're going to do it with a 62 year old man was done as as safely and well as it could have been he hit the the fleshy part of the table and he landed on andrade so his fall was as broken as it can be it was a a low balcony that he dove off of he's 62 my guy like what are you doing you maniac i love it william regal who we just talked about you know as the elderly um father figure authority figure who hasn't been wrestling for 10 years is 10 years younger than sting <laughs> and sting is so wrestling 10 years he's william regal is 53 <laughs> Um, I knew he was younger. I didn't realize As he because he does. He has this this seasoned older gentleman about oh, yeah. him, and Sting Sting is gentleman. nine years older, ten years older than him, diving through three tables. My God, what a, um, what a fun business! Yeah, yeah. Um, when the Spanish fly thing happened, uh, it, it's always interesting to see like what the refs do. The ref immediately ran over, and it's like, did anybody die? You, you okay? Did you live? I thought they were dead. I was like, they're dead. There's no <laughs> <way>. <laughs> and, then, and then still, it's like, are you sure? Are you sure you're not dead? Are you sure? Are you are you sure, are you still okay? Okay, okay. Well, Do I'm, you know I'm where you are. If you're right, yeah. Yeah, like what are just insanity. Just well, insanity. the worst was I think it was actually I think it was Sammy against Matt Hardy a year or two ago. Oh when, yeah, that, was that sick bump. Like oh, this is this and this will not go right. So. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so you're right. It was it was a palate cleanser. Then we have the main event, Adam versus Adam. And shout out to the crowd. They were so <laughs> funny. There was a chance at one point. It's like, let's go, Adam, Adam, Adam suck. suck. <laughs> so many 
see <laughs> those types of things. It was a very smart crowd. Um, I knew Adam Page was going to win, but still, you knew. We also knew, like with their history and just their their abilities, you knew it was going to be really good. But at one point, I actually thought Adam Cole was going to pull it off. Yeah, there were a couple near falls in this that were fantastic. It's nice when I was pretty sure Paige was going to retain, um, but there were at least seeds of doubt that made this very, very interesting. And Adam Cole really helped sow those seeds during this match. Like in my head, Paige is coming out champion, but there was a possibility at least that Cole was going to win because there's so much happening with the title picture. What if Kenny Omega comes back and wants to take it from Cole? Like there's so many possibilities, right? But this match was fantastic. And I know some people have been a little overwhelmed by the page reign, I think because the two-year chase for it was so overwhelming. Yeah. And then the Danielson feud was so unbelievable. Kind of felt like it got lost there for a second. The Texas death match was great, but wasn't like, didn't have a strong story going into it. This had a medium story going into it, but what happened in the ring, I felt like, what a great way to close out the pay-per-view. What a special match. Both of these guys worked their asses off. Storytelling in every second of this, even in the moments where there were space, you could just see them analyzing and, and calculating what's next. And they know each other so well. Um, just really, really, really strong stuff. Like I, I felt like the right man won, but you're right. And that Adam Cole showed why he he's just one of the best doing this right now like the the amount of times he he made you bite at the fact that he might win were fantastic um i i loved this main event i thought it was a really really great match i'm glad page won sounds like we might be getting punk versus page which is very very interesting um i i would love to see that and i think you're gonna see punk turn heel for it so i think that could be really fun but i i thought a great way to close out this pay-per-view minimal interference. Like we see red dragon come down and then get chased off by the dark order, considering they could have had Omega come back as a, a presence considering Jay white is there considering the elite was there. Like they could have done so much storytelling yeah. that would have made sense. But I feel like omitting that made this like so much more special. Cause I, I like when it's clean and simple storytelling and that, the champion didn't need a ton of help. Like he should be a strong champion. So I, I just loved that. Hey, Thunder Rosa, take note when the other, when the other, uh, when your opponent has uh, yeah. interference and, and, and has friends, you bring friends too to fight those, those friends. So bring your friends down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the dumbest things, I mean, most of wrestling Twitter is dumb anyway, but, but one of the <laughs> dumbest things is the criticism of Adam Cole uh i said i can't believe he left wwe to go to this like what do you mean <laughs> wait 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 the, the 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 main event of a pay-per-view for the world title what are you talking yeah about? i think i think people are dorks but i also think part of that comes from um i think if you don't watch the product what you see is like gifts right and you see the jacksons kissing him on both cheeks and you see a lot of the silliness that unfolded you see the stay puffed marshmallow man thing right, like, right. you see a lot of the goofiness if you don't watch the product and those people aren't going to be watching the product because they stand with wwe <laughs> so um I, I when you see the the goofiness of the elite only in gift form people want to view it as a step down but make no doubt about it last night like serious as a heart attack as they say he was he was fantastic in that match it was an important match it was an important story um and he's he's working in the highest levels of of the company so i'm happy for him and i think he i i feel like both of these guys really showed out in that main event and yes the crowd was hysterical with the adam the dueling adam chance oh my god what a riot and Let's he doesn't Adam. have, yeah. Both these Adams. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't have a dad bod. Stop with that. No, people, what happens is uh, a wrestler like exhales and then someone grabs a screenshot of it and they're like, oh, look how fat he is. He was like, yeah, because they're, they're taking a uh, breath. Like people yeah. are just, yeah, dorks. it's crazy. Uh, 
this is just such a like like I I, I mean very few complaints. This was just such a re- just a really good pay per view, top to bottom. You know, it had a lot to live up to. It was a stacked card, and, and for the most part, it delivered. So, yeah, yeah. these past three pay per views have just been from all out to full gear to this have just been absolutely insane like i don't know how you continue to outdo yourselves in these ways but um i i had said that i felt like all out was insane from the surprises full gear was insane for what happened in the ring and i was like i think this is going to be a little bit of both i didn't think regal was going to be the insane surprise but uh what a what a perfect one what a perfect one to get (laughs) yeah yeah, I, w- I I thought Kenny Omega would come in at the end, but I guess at the buy-in they teased that you know they that he wasn't coming or whatever. But still, that's why I did think he was coming. Though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Don Callis showing up at the buy-in, saying like Kenny Omega's not going to be here. I was like, oh, Kenny Omega's definitely going to be here then. <laughs> right. But right. he um he had to wait for one of his surgeries because things are just like so backed up from COVID, so we won't be uh. seeing him for for a while. I think. But when we do, oh, baby, <laughs> the, the dude was putting on world quality matches with with all kinds of injuries and vertigo. Absolutely amazing. Hey, take your time man. get 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 right. That's uh, that was amazing that he was doing that with vertigo. Yeah, like not to mention, like, I don't have a healthy stomach or arms or legs or eyes or hair like I just like people can't exist in their day with vertigo much less wrestle with vertigo. right right what the hell You're is constantly that, man? Dizzy, yeah and and um and and to one of the best in the world to be doing it in the ring like you said like not just getting away with it like a a world-class wrestler with all that so yeah. my god what's a healthy kenny omega gonna bring us i can't even right. imagine <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right buddy thank you so much Thank, Thank you. you. For, this is always a blast. You I were talking it. in the middle of the night for three hours and you still come on here in the middle of the, of, of the day. Of I appreciate course. it so much. If you were like, hey, can we record at 9 a.m.? I would have been like, eh, <laughs> no. time zone, pal, because no. Yeah. But, uh, but thank you so much. I, I always love talking with you and interacting with you. Um, and I appreciate it. And there's nothing I want to do more than talk wrestling. So it's good that that's the thing I'm doing this off. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'll see you. Thank you. Bye.